shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the kickoff of a whole new build series. So, I just finished the giant beast of an ASICS intruder last week, and I've been sort of casting about for what to build since. And honestly, a lot of different candidates popped up, um, and ultimately what sort of knocked them out of contention in various ways were things like, I'm not ready to tackle another glossy blue aircraft after the Corsair last year quite yet, I'm not ready to tackle another gray thing quite yet because the intruder was a fuckload of gray. You know, some things I just wasn't feeling, some things the aftermarket support isn't quite there yet. So I decided to go with another revival project. Just like the intruder came out from five years of hibernation. Next up is the Trumpeter P40F Warhawk. Now, the P40F, for those who aren't that familiar with different P40 variants, uh, is different from most other P40s in one really important way, and that is that the P40F and the P40L were powered by Merlin engines as opposed to the standard Allison engine. And they actually did have improved performance, and everybody liked them quite a bit compared to the other P40s. There just weren't enough Merlins to go around, which is why you have things like the K and the M and the N still following after the introduction of the F. However, they were still pretty well regarded uh, for the time, and they saw a lot of use, particularly in North Africa and then in Sicily and Italy, where they were sort of the first aircraft that a lot of U.S. fighter groups were outfitted with when they came across the Atlantic. They also equipped the Free French. A uh, few famous units like the Tuskegee Airmen flew these things. So it's a pretty storied aircraft, and it's one that really has been ignored by kit makers for quite a while. Uh, up until Trumpeter dropped the F, I think it was last year or maybe late, late 2018, the only way you could get an F was with a conversion kit for the Hasegawa 132nd scale kits or some shitty, uh, I, forget the, I forget the exact manufacturer, but one of the short, short run, lower quality type 148th manufacturers also did a P40F. And that's pretty much it. So it's really welcome to see this thing in 132nd scale, even if being a trumpeter kit, it has its share of issues. So... I actually got started on this kit a little while ago, and I think I got distracted and pulled away from it because of, I believe it was the Corsair and the Thunderbolt that I was working on in 2019 that just kind of caved my interest in this for a little bit. But I've always wanted to come back to it and play with it some more. So here we go. We got the P40F. Uh, this is completely a tape job at this point. You know, the cockpit's not even done. Uh, I fucked up the original spinner, so I actually went out and bought a second, second sprue. So working on the spinner as well. As you can see, it's got some uh, Barracuda wheels on it, already mounted to the landing gear, basically just a press fit. It's actually a really damn good fit, so one less thing to worry about. <laughs> That'll be a, a, nice, uh, a nice change of pace from the joys of the intruder's nose gear. What can I say about this kit overall? Basically, I think in general, it's a very straightforward build. Uh, it doesn't have the split tail, like the Hasegawa kits have, which is great to see. The wing, even though it looks like there are gaps at this point, because it's just kind of all sort of taped and held together, the second that you apply some dihedral pressure to it, look at that, they just, they sink right up. Um, the wing joins are interesting because, as you can see back here, it's got openings for the landing flaps, which I am not going to be deploying, probably. But there are these big beefy photo etched chunks that run back here and they actually help align not only the wings but the wings to the fuselage as well so a lot of cool stuff going on uh, that makes it a nice simple friendly looking build the intakes as you can see the the holes through the uh through the sides of the cowl here there's actually a plate that mounts inside and if you're using the fishtail exhausts they come as individual individual little exhausts so you can literally plop them in after everything is said and done which is awesome so, a lot of things that I really, really like about the kit from an engineering and buildability standpoint. There are a few that I don't. Uh, one of them is, if you look up here at the instrument panel combing, 
and that lovely seam running right down the middle. So once the fuselage is, cl is closed up and glued and everything, and that's closed up, that has to be attended to without getting shit all in the cockpit, which is awesome, right? And then the windscreen. Come on, you. The windscreen fits decently, but as you can see, there is basically no forgiveness whatsoever for like framing around it or any of that stuff. It's just literally glass onto the plastic. <sighs> Not my favorite thing in the world, but I don't think it'll be that bad because the fit is actually pretty good. Um, the other thing, the Has so the Hasegawa kit actually has these window scallops sort of internal, and then you literally put two clear parts around them sort of on the outside, and you just mask off the scalloped windows. Trumpeter kit just gives you the scalloped windows to kind of drop in there. Again, we're talking a glass to plastic join, which is never ideal. So those are probably my two biggest construction annoyances with the kit. The only other massive annoyance that I have is, is it just me or does this cockpit look gigantically wide, just humorously wide? Uh, you know, it's, I, I can swear that opening is bigger than in the P-47. It is gigantic. The stick look like, I don't know if you can even see the control stick in there, but it, I mean, it looks like it's a baseball bat. <laughs> uh, the, the seat that they give you in this kit is just really oddly proportioned. I mean, look at that. It's, it's as, you know, the, the seat itself is as long as the backrest is tall, and it's this really weird shape. It, it feels like they got some dimension in this thing wrong and it threw everything off in this one particular area. But uh, anyway, yeah, that is an annoyance. Fortunately, I do have two replacement options that I'm playing with. The first one that I started a while back is this CMK resin seat, which is pretty good uh, for the most part, except the molded on belts are a bit annoying and I would have preferred to do something like HGW fabric belts and have some more fun there. But this is livable. Now, my, my upscale from that is to try to get this Edward seat, which I apologize, it has been annealed, so it's kind of grody looking right now. Uh, try to get it worked out. The challenge with it is you have to not... Let me set the P47 down. You have to not only get the backrest folded into this very shallow curve that meets the back of the seat pan here, you also have to install. You also have to deal with all these uh, little stiffener joints that they put into the aluminum, and these are done by basically rubbing a ballpoint pen across the back of the thing to punch out the front. So you have these little. Come on, let's see if I can get. There we go. You can kind of see the ridges. Um, they're fine. The problem is bending this thing when those things are there. Pain in the ass. Adding those things, once you've already bent it, pain in the ass. So there's really no good way around it. And this is one where I'm honestly shocked beyond belief that there's no Quick Boost, Barracuda, AMS, anybody, nobody out there makes a good resin seat for the P40. There's a uh, cutting edge cockpit for the Trumpeter P40B. Or, no, I think it's for the Hasegawa P40E. But... It's basically like the CMK seat where it has the belts molded in. So if you want a beltless approach, you're pretty much SOL. <sighs> I don't really know what to do about that yet. Um, I'll honestly probably end up going with the CMK seat. On the other side of the cockpit, let's see, I don't know if you can see in here at all. This is not the best way to show this off. Um, I am using the Edward look panel. I will probably have to stick with that because the other option that I have is Photo Edge. Which, eh. um, the look panel's fine. My only problem with it is that all the white looks super uniform, so I'm currently investigating ways to try to break that up a bit, maybe add some clear yellow to it here and there to sort of beige it down a little tiny bit, but I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to go about that uh, at this point. So, yeah, got a couple things to solve. Uh, planning to build this up as a French P40F with the awesome uh, Indian head logo right back here next to the scalp window. It's got like a little green slash down here. Uh, roundels, obviously, for the French. 
and the one I'm doing is actually number nine, which on the reference photo I have has a nice little bit of nose texture that says Maggie in a cool sort of fat shadowed font. Um, I will probably keep that, but I'm kind of tempted to go and swap that out for my daughter's name just to, you know, have a little bit of fun with it maybe and give myself a bit more freedom for not adhering to the references as closely as I normally do. But... I'll kind of make that decision when I get closer to painting and all that stuff. So yeah, that in a nutshell is the P40F. And hopefully it's going to be a slightly faster, maybe slightly more relaxed build than the A6 was. Um, and a good chance to play around with some desert camo, which I haven't really tackled in a long ass time. I think maybe going back to the Spitfire 8 that I built in 2011. <laughs> so it's it's been a while since I've played with like the Middlestones and Dark Earths of the World. And... Doing those in a nice battered fashion to a P40 will be hopefully a lot of fun. So stick around as more episodes start trickling out in the coming weeks. And check you later.